Hey everybody, this is Time Troll Beard, and this is, I think, episode 6 of Let's Make Minecraft Shaders, How to Make Minecraft Shaders. Uh, we're going to start off with Notepad, we're going to close all, um, and then we're going to do our version control. So let's start at our A tutorial 5, copy, paste, and we're going to rename it so we still have access to a version that worked in case we just utterly break this. Okay, let's come to A tutorial 6, shaders. And let's start with our GBuffers Terrain Fragment Shader. And today's episode is going to be on reducing redundancy. Um, as we did before with includes, with including settings and like things like color adjustment, the less we type the same code multiple times, the easier it is to update things and add new features, and the easier it is to not mess things up. Um, let's go into Minecraft, and we're going to look at the problem we saw last week. So let's open our tutorial 6, apply it, let's start up a world. I'm take off any resource packs I've got on here. Okay. And it looks like um, the first thing I'm going to say we should fix here is let's adjust our default fog value. So let's open up our settings. But I think we have that way too high fog max. Let's put this to like half or something. We'll do some actual menus too. So while we're here in the settings menu, let's make some sub menus. That's a part of organization as well. Um, so our stuff is just kind of, if we look in our, our thing here, let's press R to reload. If we go into our shader pack options, it's all just one screen, and that's no good. It's starting to get to be too much. So let's make some subscreens. To do that, we're going to actually open up our shader.properties file. And screen here is our main screen, but we can make other screens as well. So let's say we want a screen called uh, colors, and that'll handle these first few things. Let's do screen.colors equals and it's just as simple as that and we'll put blue green gray uh, if I scrap it, uh, let's put all this stuff in there for now we'll just cut this from here and paste it in here and to make this actually appear we need to put it here inside of square brackets that look like this and we'll just put a space between that and the next thing and then here we've got lighting stuff so let's take these lighting things, and we'll cut those. We'll go down here, make another line, and do screen dot lighting equals, and paste that. You want to make sure that these are spelled the same here and up here. So do this again. And we'll put this here. It looks like after that we have some fog stuff. So let's cut that. Do a little square brackets. Say fog. Down here we'll do screen dot fog equals that. And let's save this and reload in Minecraft and see if that works. Cool, so now we have sub menus that have all of our stuff. That's a lot better. All right, so <laughs> that's organization. Let's do the other part of organization, which I said we'd start at. Um, which is reducing redundancy. We had the problem that if we uh, have any mobs going here and bring something out, maybe like a cow, um, our fog was applying to the terrain, but not to the cows. There we go. Um, because they're in a different shader and we only put fog in the one shader. But we do also have things like our red entities here that does things special just to the entity shader and not the terrain shader. So we're going to try to combine it while still letting it know that there's a difference between them. Um, there's probably a few different ways you could do this, but what we're going to do is we're going to make main files and put all our features in them and then have it kind of branch off with um, pre-compiler directives like this. So what we'll do first is we'll take our gbuffers train fragment shader and let's just select all, copy, And we'll do a, a new. I'm going to paste it here. And we're going to just get rid of version 120. And let's save this. 
in our shaders folder as main. And let's go up to the top as all types. And this is the fragment shaders. Where we, actually, we can just do just glsl because um, this is just a glsl file. It's not being loaded directly. We'll put an F here to remind us that this is the fragment shader. And let's save this. And that's just a file now. Um, so now if we go to our gbuffers terrain, we're going to get rid of everything but that include in that version 120. Let's go way down here, just delete all this. And we'll change this to main F. And what this should do is it means that gbuffers train should just load main F. Now the only thing that's, that's still in this main file is the version number because that needs to be in this first file. Iris might let you get away with that because it's patching it. Um, but you still, this should always be included here. It will not work on Optifine if you put that inside the main. So let's see if this works. Okay, our terrain is still drawing, so it seems to work. So let's look at our gbuffers entities, fragment shader. And what was different on these? Let's try to think. Um, the main thing is we were doing if red entities here. So let's copy this and we'll put this in our main down here at the bottom after everything else. And let's save that. And let's take what's in our gbuffers train here. Let's copy this. And let's put that here. Let's select all, delete, paste, save. And now gbuffers entities and gbuffers train are using the same file. Um, the problem here, though, if we hit refresh on that, is now everything is turning red, not just the entities, because it doesn't know the difference anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little define here. You might be able to, in a, I know at least in shader properties, you could use render stages for this. Um, I'm not sure if that works in these. So we're going to say this is an entity. We're going to define that in gbuffer entities. Let's copy this so we've got it. We'll save it and then let's go into our main and we'll say not only if red entities is one should we run this, but we should only run it if is defined this is an entity. And then this will only run, but this needs to be not capitalized. Let's make sure this. And then um, this should only run if we're coming through this file, which declares this as an entity before opening main. So let's get back here and open this back up. And let's see, did I not save something? Save. Maybe we've got different stuff going on in the vertex shaders as well because it seems like we don't have fog on there. So let's combine our vertex shaders too. Let's open up our gbuffers terrain vertex shader. And let's open up our entities vertex shader. And let's see if there's a difference. Um, it looks like there is because there's some stuff going on here that's not going on here. Like we have our view position, it's not there. So we might just be missing things. So let's take this gbuffers train vertex shader and let's save as, and we'll call this main v.glsl. Save it and just get rid of the version 120. Save it again. And then we can open up, open it back up. Discovers train, vertex shader, keep the version 120, and we will include, just like we did in the other one, we're going to only include main v. GLSL. Let's save that. Let's make sure that this still works for the train. It does. And then let's copy this here. And let's go to our GBA for entities. We will select all and delete it. And let's paste. And let's see if this works. Cool. Now it looks like our is entity flag didn't work, but um, the cows do now have fog on them. 
So it's getting the data it needed now for that. So let's look at our little flag and see what we might have messed up with that. So let's look at our stuff. We've got to define this as an entity. Let's see if I just did the define on or something. Because um, we might need to check if def or something instead. Well, let's try this first. Let's put our main if red enters is equal to one and let's see if this if def works. And maybe we don't have the option turned on also, that's a possibility. Colors, red entity is on. Okay, so we've got something wrong with that, so let's debug that statement. Let's try this just as a, an equals one. Save it, and let's go into our entities fragment shader. I'll have that be a one, and let's see if that does this. My brain isn't doing the best today. There we go, that works. Um, so since my brain is not doing the best today, it's easy, very possible I'm just messing something up. So we'll just do that that way for now. Um, but if you want to do it, you can do it with the, the other defines if you can figure out how to make them work. I cannot right now because my brain is falling out of my skull. Um, so there we go. Now we've got these in the same shaders. And what that means is that we can update something like the fog and it will update on both of those and we don't have to go and copy code over in two places. But we can also still have things that are different um, like this. So something else we might want to do then to make our gray terrain work properly and not mess up our entities because that was a setting. Let's see if that what that does right now. Let's turn off red entities and let's put terrain gray up. And since we didn't distinguish terrain as being separate and lock that behind something, this is probably going to make the entities also gray. It looks like it does. So let's do a similar flag like this in our in our terrain. So let's go to the buffers terrain and we'll put a little flag in here and we'll call this is terrain. So I'm put my caps lock on. We'll save this, and then let's go back into our main fragment shader, and let's see train Craymont here. This is here, so we can um, just lock this behind that. So we'll do hashtag, hashtag if, and that needs to be lowercase, and we'll paste our thing. This is train e is equal to one. We'll do this stuff, and then we'll do an end if to close it, and we'll highlight these and hit tab to indent it in. So we've got that nice organization. Let's save that. Go back in here and refresh and there we go now it's only working on that so cool so this is a very short episode but this is a very handy technique to learn um let's reset our settings just see what they look like and i think i'm going to change our default fog settings a little more because i don't like this very much let's go into our, our settings let's go to fog max fog and let's not have that not be 20 let's have that be 100 Save that. Let's go back in here and refresh. And we got this a little gentler and still has a little bit of a fog effect. All right, so there we go. That's this episode. Um, all we were doing is learning how to reduce redundancy so that it will be easier to make changes in the future. We could just edit this one file. And if we want things separate about them, we can just put little flags in the base file, which has to have the version number. We're doing our little flag and then we're opening the main file. And in the main file, it just looks for that flag, does things specific to that shader. Um, and this is a nice little technique. Besides that, we also did our our submenus, which is just screen equals, and it's in square brackets, the name of the submenus. And then you do screen dot that submenu equals whatever. So there we go. Nice short episode with some few little tricks to help make shader developing a lot easier going forward. Uh, so hope you all have a good day, and I'll talk to you soon.